Okay, so this is the uh, slideshow for chapter 20 of Building Vocabulary Skills. Uh, if you want to follow along, you can do so on page 114. Um, so here's our words. Um, accelerate, adverse, um, advocate, audible, coherent, comparable, competent, consecutive, conspicuous, conspicuous, and uh, deteriorate. All right, so our first one here is accelerate. Uh, the sleds began sliding down the hill slowly and then accelerated to top speed. Brendan's car accelerated rapidly, allowing him to catch up with the slow-moving ice cream truck. So what accelerate means is to go, uh, to go faster. On page uh, 115, it means um, to speed up, number, um, number five. So accelerate, actually, I think is a word that's used in the giver when it talks about um, Jonas and his sled going down the hill, and it started to accelerate. Um, if you think about accelerate if you in your car, um, you have one of the pedals in your car as an accelerator, and you push down on that pedal, um, and it makes your car go faster. The other pedal is the gas, and the other one's the clutch if you have a, um, a manual car. Um, but to accelerate means to to um, to go faster to to increase um, in in speed. Uh, our next one here is adverse, and this one is an adjective. Mozart created musical masterpieces masterpieces in spite of his adverse circumstances, illness, and debt. Adverse newspaper reviews persuaded many people not to see the violent movie. And adverse means unfavorable. On page 115, adverse is number four, harmful or unfavorable. So another way to think about um, adverse is, is that we can also think of it as, as difficult. And difficult in the sense that um, it uh, makes it hard for us um, to, do, to do something. Um, so a lot of you guys are in pretty adverse situation. Um, a number of you are here without any family. You're in a new country where it's not your language, and you have to face a lot of difficulties in order to be um, successful. Um, in the first example with Mozart, um, he he was sick and he was in debt, meaning he owed money. So even though he had these difficulties, he was still able to um, be successful in writing um, music. Um, in the second one, we say these are adverse newspaper reviews um, because they're, um, if you made a movie, um, you don't want someone to be saying bad things about the movie. Um, because it, what it will mean is that it'll be difficult for you to get people to come um, and see and see that movie. Um, and then in the picture there, we say adverse weather conditions. We're saying that these are bad weather conditions because it'd be difficult to um, to travel um, in that situation. So adverse has that meaning of unfavorable, but it also means that it that it makes something difficult uh, to be done. Our next one here is an advocate, and you'll notice that it's pronounced kit instead of kate. Now, there's there this one's a noun. There is also a verb, which is advocate, um, but this is our noun form. Um, my physician is an advocate of using nicotine gum to quit smoking. She says that gum helps people resist cigarettes. Um, our mayor is an advocate of a drug-free America. He often mentions it in his talks to different civic groups. Um, so advocate means a supporter. And you'll notice that in both of these ones we have of following it. It doesn't always have to be followed by of, but it often is. Um, so advocate on page 115 is number eight, a supporter, someone who argues for a cause. So um, I said that advocate is actually a verb. And advocate means that that you actively support something, meaning that you are pushing for something um, to to happen. Um, so an advocate is a person who actively supports some idea or some cause. So in the first example, the physician is an advocate of using nicotine gum. Um, what that means is that he or, she, or in this case she um, actively encourages people to use nicotine gum in order to quit smoking. Um, in the second case, the mayor is an advocate of a drug-free America. It means that he is a um, supporter of this and he actively works to try and get um, 
people not to not to be um, on drugs. So the, one of the differences here between like an advocate and a supporter, a supporter you can be passive, you don't have to be active, but an advocate is an active, um, an active supporter. Next word here is audible, and this is an adjective. Uh, dogs, bats, and other animals can hear high-pitched sounds that are not audible to humans. The argument next door was barely audible, so I put a plastic cup on the wall and put my ear to the cup so I could hear better. So what audible means in this case is hearable. Um, on page 115, it's uh, number one, able to be heard. Um, so some of you may or may not have heard me talk to, about, there's a website called Audible, um, and it's a, a website that has recorded books on it. And the reason, I assume, that it's called Audible is because it has books that you can hear. Um, um, because that's what that's what audible means. Um, it means that it's able to be it's able to be um, heard. Um, it doesn't mean that you can hear it and understand it, but it does mean that you can understand it. So I'm um, sorry that you can hear it. So um, for example, in the first one, the dogs and the bats and the other animals, they can hear things that we can't hear. If you've ever seen a dog whistle, you know, if you blow a dog whistle, humans aren't going to be able to hear that noise, but the dogs will. Um, uh, in, the, in the next, in the second example, um, it says something was barely audible. It means that I almost couldn't hear it, so that it was difficult to hear. Um, but it audible, again, means that it's something that you're able to hear. Next one is coherent, and this is an adjective as well. To be sure that your essay has a coherent organization, write an outline first. The article about the robbery was not coherent. The events were not presented in logical order. Um, what coherent means is clear. On page 115, it's number 7, organized in a logical and orderly way. Now, coherent is a word that you're likely to hear in your academic career, especially when you're writing papers. Um, most of the time, um, the the teacher might write on your paper, this is not um, coherent. And when we talk about something be, being coherent, we're talking about it being clear, but the reason that it's clear is because of its organization. It's organized in a way that um, that makes sense and sticks everything together. Um, for those guys uh, who who are more science-minded, mi um, we, we talk about um, water being coherent. One of the things, one of the properties of water is that water um, sticks to itself. So, for example, um, and sticks to other substances. To, so, for example, if you take a um, glass and you fill it with water and you pour out the water, um, uh, sorry, this is a different meaning, that's cohesive, but um, if, we, if you take water and you drop water um, on a piece of wax, wax paper, um, what you'll notice is that it'll form like a little bubble, meaning it'll, the water will all stick together. If you put too much, eventually it will you know, break and spread out. But water is naturally coherent. It likes to stick together. So similarly, when we talk about something being coherent, like an essay, it means that it sticks together. The different parts of it are connected and um, um, and, and make sense because they're connected. So the next one is comparable, and this is also an adjective. Uh, since the quality of low mileage used cars is often comparable to that of brand new ones, my parents never buy new cars. Um, because the two jobs were comparable in challenge, interest, and salary, Santos had trouble deciding which to take. Um, so comparable means nearly alike. Now, if you look at this word, it's tempting to pronounce it um, as comparable, because that's really what it looks like. Um, that's the wrong pronunciation, but that, but that should help with the meaning. Um, when we say something's comparable, we mean that if we were to compare the two things, we would find a lot of similarities um, between them. Um, so when we talk about um, like compare contrast essays, when we say compare in that situation, we're talking about the similarities. Um, in number page 115, it's number three. Comparable means similar or able to be compared. 
um, but really to, to the, the thing to keep in mind when we talk about um, comparable is that yet yeah, you can compare them but they're they're probably more alike than they are um, than they are different next word is competent um, this is an adjective some secretaries are more competent than their bosses they know much more about the business are better organized and uh, work much harder uh, to be a competent juggler takes a lot of practice um, and what competent in this case means is skilled um, on page 115 competent is number 10 capable well qualified skilled so um, I forget if it was in, I think it was with us, we had the word um, adequate. Let me just double check that. And no. <laughs> that was a different class. Um, adequate means uh, good and good enough. Um, competent has, is, is a little bit better than, uh, than adequate. Competent means that you are, um, that you know how to do something and you know how to do it well. Um, so for the, uh, in the first example, the secretaries are more competent than their bosses. They're actually better at their job than their bosses are. In the second one, to be a competent juggler, to be like a good juggler takes a lot of practice. Um, so competent has this meaning of um, being able to do something well. The next one's consecutive. So we have, uh, this is an adjective. Um, the reporters would work nights for two consecutive weeks and then they'd work days for a month straight. Uh, first, Reiko had the flu. That was immediately followed by strep throat, which was followed by pneumonia. These consecutive illnesses kept her out of work for two months. So consecutive means happening in a um, happening in a row. On page 115, con uh, consecutive is number two, following one after another without interruption. So that's the important thing about consecutive, is means that they're following each other, but that there's no space between them. So for example, Monday and Tuesday are consecutive days, but we wouldn't say that Monday and Wednesday are consecutive. Even though they're in one happens after the other, consecutive is, means that they're right next to each other. Um, so in our first example, two consecutive weeks um, they work nights so that that means for two whole weeks they just work in the night and then they work days for a month after that for a whole month um, and in the uh, example th these sicknesses the woman had came one after another so there wasn't space between them and that's why she was out of the office for two whole months our next one here is conspicuous um, and this is also an adjective. Nina's wide-brimmed hat was so conspicuous that it's impossible not to catch sight of her in a crowd. The new skyscraper stands 50 stories high, making it the tallest and thus the most conspicuous building in the city skyline. So in this case, conspicuous means noticeable. Um, on page 115, it's obvious or easily noticed. Um, now, the word that is similar in some ways to this is the word prominent, which I believe is a word that, yeah, which is a word that we've had before. Um, but it doesn't mean exactly the same thing. Conspicuous means n noticeable in that, um, uh, in, in a way that it sort of um, stands, that it stands out, that it's, it's noticeable because it's different from the things around, uh, um, things around it. So in the first example, this woman wears this big red hat so it's it's very obvious to see her because she because it's something that stands out from the crowd that makes it makes her look different um in the in the second one um the this new skyscraper um is 50 stories high um meaning it's taller than everything out everything else um so it sort of um stands out from everything else all right, and here our last word is uh, deteriorate, and this is a verb. Um, over many years, the abandoned house had deteriorated um, until its walls crumbled and its floorboards rotted. Uh, Tanya's health continued to deteriorate until her classmates started to visit her regularly. Then she began to improve. So deteriorate means to decay. Um, on page 115, it is number nine, to become worse, become weaker, or damage. So deteriorate really means that that something um, something is is going from good 
um, to bad or from okay to bad and it really has that meaning of um, breaking breaking down um, falling apart uh, so in the first example, the house is deteriorated, uh, meaning so the walls are falling apart, they're crumbling, and the floorboards are rotting apart. If we look at the picture, we see that the road is deteriorating, it's, so it's actually breaking up. Um, when we talk about health, we can say our health deteriorated means that you're getting weaker and weaker and weaker, and that you're not you're not improving, that you're getting sicker and sicker, and that your body is um, is um, breaking up. Okay. So let's take a look at the um, sentence check. You can switch over to page 116 for this. So this first one here, D doesn't like to be blank. So she sits in the back of the classroom where few people can see her, right? So if she doesn't want, uh, she doesn't want to be seen. So what word means that you're easily seen? Um, anyone can be a blank cook, but few people develop into great chefs. All right, so here, this, this is an example um, uh, that sort of goes against what I said earlier, but this one says anyone can be good at doing, uh, good at doing uh, cooking, but not great at doing it. The first one is conspicuous, right? She doesn't want to stand out. She doesn't want to be noticeable, so she sits in the back. And in the second one, um, it's about being competent, meaning that she's good at cooking, that she's capable at cooking that she's skilled at cooking, um, but to become great is a, a different thing. All right, the weather was bad and two of the astronauts were sick. Because of these blank conditions, the shuttle was canceled. Okay, so if you think about these conditions, the weather being bad and the astronauts being sick, are these good? Are these good conditions? Are these favorable conditions um, to launch a spaceship or are they unfavorable? Uh, since I care about the environment, I'm a blank of passing laws that limit the pollution in the air. Okay, so I care about the environment, so I'm going to do something about it. So what what does that mean if I if I do something um, for a certain cause, if I support a certain cause? When the comedian sensed his audience was becoming bored, he blanked his pace to more jokes per minute. So his audience is becoming less interest, so he started to go faster. He's having more jokes, um, uh, more jokes uh, every minute. So the first one, these are adverse conditions. This is not, these are not good conditions to launch a spaceship. And the second one, it's advocate. All right, this is someone who cares about the environment, so they support it. They actively support it. And the next one, he starts to speed up his jokes, to have more jokes. At the movies, Tina put her arm around Ben and said in a barely blank whisper, I love you, pass the popcorn, right? So in the movie theater, how are you going to, um, how are you going to talk? Are you going to talk in a really loud voice that everyone can hear? Or are you going to talk in a lower voice that fewer people can hear? Um, and what word is talking about hearing? Um, ben and Tina's relationship began to blank after they had a big fight over money. So what happen, What can happen to someone's relationship if they if they're fighting? Is their relationship going to get going to get better or is it going to get worse? So the first one is audible, right? It's barely audible. You can barely hear it. And the second one is deteriorate, right? The the relationship got weaker um, after this fight. It, it started to get worse. People often bring up their children in a manner that is blank to the way they were raised. Thus, abused children may become abusing parents, right? So, um, uh, people tend to bring up their children in sort of the same way or a similar way as the way that they were brought up. So, what word means this? Similar. Um, during her high fever, Celia loudly called out broken words and phrases. She seemed unable to speak full blank sentences. So in this one, it's saying broken words and um, phrases. So it's like her um, what she was saying wasn't clear because it didn't it didn't it, it didn't hold together. It wasn't one solid solid piece. Uh, there was no break in the summer's heat. Records were set nationwide for the number of blank days above 90 degrees. 
um, so th the 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 weather was really bad um, for a period of time for several days that were happening right after um, one after another. So the first one is comparable, right? The the way that they were raised is similar to the way they raise their children. Um, and the second one, it's coherent, right? She has broken words and phrases, so it's not an organized or clear way of speaking. And the last one is um, consecutive days. So these are days that followed one after another without any interruption. All right, so um, go ahead and take a look at um, the online activities. Um, give a shot at the, the questions, and we'll review them in class. Take care. Bye.